Well, hello, everybody. My pickles, my snowflakes, my turtles, my no matter what clubs, and, of course, the Goldilocks. You have your cuppa? I've got my cuppa. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a bonus video. It is Thursday, April 2nd, and why not? It's not like my schedule is bursting, right? Although, I have figured out how to fill my day. If you're an older seasoned vet of life, which um, a good portion of us are, you're pretty used to filling your days anyway, whether it's still working, um, totally retired, semi-retired, whatever. Um, I think a lot of us have figured out how to um, fill our days, do some um, guilty pleasure things, as well as keeping our, our brains and our bodies um, active and and um, elastic and flexible and adjusting. Um, most of us have had many ra rodeos in life that we've had to go through, so we're doing a pretty good job of it. And I know that humor is one of the most important tools in my toolkit of how to get through all of these days. And so, I don't know, I just kind of enjoy it. I'm I'm pretty much a certified, qualified, um, full-time loner anyway, which is kind of funny because I, you know, I do this and it's social because it's my idea of social is I do a video and answer the comments. It's like, it's like that's my idea of, of social. Um, you know, I don't see anybody that I know anymore. Um, I suppose if I went to one of those Zoom AA meetings that that have popped up all over Cape Cod, that I would, um, you know, see some familiar faces. Um, some sober people live on my street. Um, there's even a sober house on my street that houses about eight of them. And so I do see um, the people that live on my street and can do a honk and a wave as I drive by. I'm not doing Uber or Lyft anymore, but I'm itching to, if you know what I mean. They've offered to... Um, figure out ways to get us on unemployment, but it's not official yet. So that'll be helpful. And um, it'll make the time going along faster. I fit into my day going to the beach and getting those negative ions from the water and the beach. It's just wonderful. Um, the only thing that's not cooperating is sun. We haven't had any sun for five days. So uh, I kind of did it yesterday, even though there was no sun. And um, I still do grocery store CVS and gas. Um, <clears throat> not like I was doing it, but you know, I get out there. I, I keep it busy. I, I wake up in the morning. I don't know about a lot of you, but I've had the best, deepest, solid slumber. Um, I'm getting pretty used to having nine or 10 hours a day. I don't know the, how that will happen when it all kicks in, but it's seeming like there might not even be a summer for us on Cape Cod. So it'll be kind of sad because so many people depend on either extra jobs or coming to the Cape and working. And it was always a rite of passage for people, you know, growing up here in New England, um, you know, to go to the Cape and get a summer job and, you know, bartending, bar backing, waitressing, um, all of those sort of things, or, or even like working on a ferry, you know, all of it. And it's like, what's going to happen? Cleaning summer rentals. It's like, you know, there's just no talk of any of that. And I don't know how landlords are handling it so far. I've been lucky. I did get an email from one of my tenants saying, don't worry, the rent will be on time. I'm an essential employee. And it was like, that was great. And my other, my other tenant paid the day before um, April 1st. So, so far I'm blessed with that. I still am working my matron job at the police department and um but the last four shifts that i've worked there's only been one prisoner um so that's kind of good too i mean i guess i go in to watch tv there <laughs> instead of home I, I don't know so i'm doing what i'm doing just like all of you are doing what you're doing i haven't strayed from my carnivore way of eating i find that um having a nice hunk of ribeye or two and um, my backup or 
uh, complimentary eggs next to it seems to work best for me i keep posting what i'm eating it must look kind of boring but it's it's consistent and i think being consistent boy slippery slopes when you're home all day um alone you know i know that my ms slick is just she is just dancing a jig just hoping that i i cave to the standard american diet way of eating. It certainly is available in the stores. And um, I don't know about you, but our CVS is like, it, you know, it's like, if you're not standard American diet, you're not going to be on their shelves as far as food items go. So I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, this is all life on life's terms. And this is our new normal that we're adjusting to. So that's what I do. I just adjust to the new normal. And um, get up and do my do. I do the rebounder. People ask me all the time, you know, what, who do I follow on YouTube with the rebounder? I don't follow anybody. I put on some of my previously recorded shows like 600 pound man, uh, life, um, maybe a Dr. Phil, maybe, a, um, you know, some shows that I watch on my, my guilty pleasure shows, or I just put on the news. Um, it's certainly enough to keep me and my pea brain that has no attention span. I have the attention span of a fruit fly, do we? I do. Those that still live here <laughs> that haven't met that z z z zapper yet. So that's what I do. And um, it's very simple. It's very quiet. Um, little routines. It's like the floor plan I saw of the house. Somebody posted and they said our travel plans for the weekend. <laughs> to go from the, the bathroom to the basement to the living room back to the kitchen again. So I just, you know, we're still cooking on the big green egg. We did a huge charcoal uh, chips for smoking um, trip to BJ's last week, maybe. So we've got enough of that going on, and I still plan to have my pizza two days from now on Saturday. I've got my organic cream cheese and my um, uh, mozzarella pearls. I like those from Belgozio, I think it is, Belgozio. And um, so, yeah, it's just regular. I got my Pete and Jerry eggs. I got an 18-pack um, and um, of them. At BJ's so we've got enough eggs we've got enough butter because I always buy my butter and um, coffee ample supply key to always pick up one of those at market basket and I just do my little day and it's just how I do it I have to be you know I, I, I just can't emphasize enough being safe with your food choices because um, being that it's a very slippery slope, I know for us, <clears throat> our lockdown in Massachusetts, our, our non-lockdown lockdown, you know, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, looks like a duck, but we're not calling it a lockdown. You know, the strong suggestions say um, until May 4th. There was a petition that was passed around getting signatures to keep non-CAPE residents away you know, really, not in my backyard. I mean, it's like these people that own these, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollar homes here on Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, you're being told you can't come here. You're being advised not to because the hospital, especially on the two islands, couldn't um, handle a surge of sick people. They have like 14 beds on each island. Um, here we have two hospitals. Um, so I don't know. But then when I watch the Boston News, it's like they're turning this place in Worcester and this place in Springfield and this place down by the waterfront in Boston into those adjunct hospitals. And then not to mention Mercy and Hope, the two big ships. So, you know, I'm just watching the news like probably a lot of you are. I watched John Campbell, who is a um, doctor and a retired instructor. And um, he is excellent every day. He gives an update. He also has um, on the side interviews or other 
um, things, but every day is at least a, I don't know, 15 to 20 minute update globally, which is interesting because you can see the um, hot spots and how they're growing and, you know, peaking and all of those sort of things. It is kind of fascinating if you're following it. And he's brilliant and he lists, um, this is John Campbell, again, if you want to get the piece of paper, <laughs> his name is John Campbell. Um, and he lists, and it's funny because he has one of those ink cartridge pens that like I always used to love when I was in school. And he's talking about the symptoms that present themselves in different countries or with different people and how it goes. And it is kind of fascinating because some, you know, the um, the scary part, of course, is is those of us that have it and don't even know we have it and continue on. And then there's the debate of the mask, to wear one or not to wear one. I know I'm a face toucher, a lot of us are. And so it's like with this, with the hair in the way and the glasses and the, you know, I put on my mask at Maggie Basket. And of course I put it on and of course the first thing that happens is the glasses get steamed. And then these are those, um, what do they call them? The um, progressives. And so if it gets like this, I can't see, and oh my God. So it's kind of comical what's going on in my head when I'm there, but shopping is such a somber thing. You don't see a lot of people happy to be doing much of anything, but remaining a carnivore through all of it is the important thing. So I go, I know what I'm looking for. The, the list is short, meat, butter, eggs, keto. There you go. And, um, and just enjoying, um, trying to enjoy the simplest new normal is what I'm aiming for. Fortunately, I am fascinated by watching, you know, the news and listening to talk radio 24 seven about all of this. I guess it just is my new friend and buddy. And I find the channels that talk about it that still have some sort of um, politically incorrect funniness about them teasing each other, the ones that are at home that wouldn't dream of going into the studio and the other ones that mock them for being home and still drive into the studio each day. It, it's just, it's a whole new ball game, isn't it? It's just very, very different and funny saying ball game because the radio station that I listen to is a sports channel and I began listening to it when Kobe Bryant died because I I just like the ensemble of people and um, their humor and their way of dealing with things. And I've kind of stuck with them rather than the, um, you know, monotone of one person. Um, I do like local news though, right? Don't we all? So I, that's what I do. That's my simple little day and how I could spend 13 minutes talking about it is beyond me. I, I guess that's just what we do. So enjoy your cuppa, little bonus video. You can talk about how you're doing down below, your struggles, your joys, your adaptation. We're all in this together because remember, the keto carnivore carnivish community doesn't cheat. That's you making your singular decision. And you know, if you're watching me, I, I love my structure and consistency. It's, it's like what, it's as nice as this fleece bathrobe. It just keeps me safe. I made the decision to become carnivore and from there flows all of my decisions and it just continues to work. And I hope that your food program is the same for you and you aren't in trouble. I don't want to see anybody in trouble through all of this. We have enough without food troubles, right? So thank you very much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Carnivore. I'll see you the next time. Or I'll see, face toucher, face toucher, face toucher. <laughs> I'll see you the next time with um, a video. And it could be my OMAD for today, which is, I believe it's an omelet with a piece of ribeye. What else? Thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye for now.